Welcome to Channel Today in History, in today's video we will talk about the day, August 28, 1922, Emergence of Radio Advertising. In 1927, the important principle that radio waves belong to the people, and that they could only be used privately with a formal authorization from the government, for a specified period, was introduced in the United States. Licenses would be granted or cancelled according to public interest, convenience or need. In this way, the licenses of the already existing broadcasters were automatically cancelled, and the economic activity of the sector had to start anew, requesting authorization for their broadcasts and being led to ensure that their transmissions were aimed at the benefit of the public. The 1927 broadcasting law was temporary, as after seven years of trials and adjustments other statutes were drafted. The Federal Communications Commission, FCC, was founded, which would enforce the new provisions from 1934 onwards, later becoming, with some modifications, the main regulatory instrument for the transmission area in the United States. In the mid-1920s, radio entrepreneurs were seeking funding for their stations. A committee of New York businessmen asked the public for funds to hire high-quality interpreters, but failed, as listeners preferred to listen to the radio for free. This partly explains why the public later came to accept advertising messages. Philanthropists were asked to make donations to radios, just as they did to universities, hospitals or libraries, and a fee per recipient was proposed to fund broadcasting, in the hope that the industry itself would solve the problem. Meanwhile, advertising subtly imposed itself on the broadcasts. In the beginning, advertisers did not do direct advertising. They simply mentioned their name or titled the program with the name of their products. This form of advertising aroused little criticism. On August 28, 1922, the WEAF, now WNBC, launched the first commercial program in which products were mentioned for the first time. The ad reported on the sale of apartments by Queensborough Corporation. For this complaint of 10 minutes, they paid $50. A month later, two other companies, Tidewater Incorporated and American Express, announced to the industry community that their sales had increased after using the new radio advertising. Despite the success of the formula, the Secretary of Commerce was opposed to commercialization on the radio. His position won the support of several state officials. But in American society that position was doomed beforehand, as listeners were more interested in free entertainment than quality programming. Advertising was artificially extended for a brief period by the American Telephone and Telegraph Corporation, which controlled many patents. So, in the beginning, the advertising was moderated. The public was willing to listen to the advertisements on condition that they could enjoy their programs, and the money from advertising made it possible to hire comedians, singers and orchestras. Weekly radio theaters became popular, and by the end of the 1920s, the main problems of radio as a means of mass communication were resolved, so that the crisis of 1929 would have little impact on it. Did you like the video? In the description you will find the blog link with the full article, give an incentive by subscribing to the channel, liking, commenting and sharing with your friends, hugs. Until the next.